Hello and welcome from El Stadio Alfredo Di Stefano, the home of Real Madrid and this afternoon, the home of one of our live Liga FA games on this match day number 22. We're only approaching Saturday midday local time, but already there's much to discuss. Following Barcelona's curtain raiser last night at home to Valencia, the away side took the lead at Estadi Johan Cruyff amid subdued silence before Barcelona, true to form you might say, came back inside the first half, went on to claim victory and a 5-1 win and extend their perfect run this season to 66 points. The impossible 66 goals from Rolf, Pariuelo and Torrejon. Perhaps uncharacteristically, none from Asisat Oshuala leading the race for the Pichichi Award, the top goal scorer in Liga FA this season. A week today, we take on Real Madrid. It's the battle of the big ones, but it's all about match day 20, 20, 22 for now. And don't forget, also live, we have Madrid Club de Football against Athletic Club. Here, though, Real Madrid taking on Unión Deportiva Granadilla Tenerife. So many side stories going on at the top and bottom end of the Liga FA table. You can also see this lunchtime Madrid Club de Football trying to rein in Atletico de Madrid for fourth place. While well, uh, their opponents, Athletic Club, are keeping one eye on the drop zone. They're only five points clear with nine to play. And there's also a small matter of an Andalusia derby later. Real Betis are in real danger of losing the top flight status. They're just one point clear of the bottom two. Severe, it's not been a glittering season for them, but they are safe in mid-table. And there's more action Sunday too. It's a real feast of football. Villarreal and Levante Las Planas in a veritable relegation six-pointer as they both try to keep their heads above water. Alaves, Huelva and Alhama are also all in action. There's plenty of battles to be had. The main story, though, is that Barcelona's win last night puts them a full 10 points clear at the top, albeit having played one game more. Real Madrid seeking to close the gap while also keeping one eye over their shoulder because Levante sits six points behind. In the top three, barring a massive slip-up from Levante, should now be set in stone. However, there is still something to play for for Real Madrid and not just pride at that. Second place in Liga FA puts teams through to the second round of the Women's Champions League. The league path, of course, while well, third place will go through to the first round and Madrid Easters will know the tough draws can await those who are thrown in at the deep end. Having finished third last season, Real Madrid had to start their uh, tournament from the first stage before meeting Manchester City in the uh, second round. At the moment, they're poised to need to win just one tie to join you would imagine Barcelona in the group stage. Barcelona, of course, can still qualify as Champions League winners, although given that Spain is one of the top three ranked countries in the uh, UEFA coefficient, they will have a place in the group stage. 126 days. That's how long Real Madrid remained untouchable on their tremendous 13-game winning league run but finally held to a draw in last Sunday's derby with Atleti. And beginning this lunchtime's game, still 10 points off the summit after Barcelona's win last night, they remain solidly second best. The champions are up next. The Clasico on Saturday, the ultimate test of just how much the Merengues have improved over the season. And how better to prepare than with a return to winning ways here in the capital against Granadilla Tenerife. Visitors from the Canary Islands saw a streak of their own come to an end last time out. Their emphatic 5-2 win over Madrid Club de Football on Sunday snapped a five-match winless run. The Islanders, though, will struggle to hit the heights of last season when they ran to a strong fifth. They only missed Europe by six points. They now find themselves 26 points off that top three. Even so, the full nine points ahead of the bottom two, they can all but count on their participation in Liga FA next season. And a result against Real Madrid today threatens Las Blancas' own European hopes. Levante sitting not too far behind. Let's uh, break down the Granadilla Tenerife lineup then. 5 2 victory last time out. Just one change from that 11 for uh, Jose Herrera. Claire Faulkner, the American, drops to the bench in place of Thais Ferreira, who comes back into the side, having missed out altogether on Sunday.
And for Alberto Torrio's team, just the uh, two changes from the derby draw with Atleti. Esther will uh, drop to the bench. Can see Robles also, which means only a stick bleak start to the season for Ney Cari Garcia. And uh, Sofia Sfeva comes back in. There is a first league start for Linda Caicedo. She started the uh, Copa de la Reina. Win over Villarreal and the referee today, Elena Pelaez. She'll be leading our third team as we get down to brass tacks in match day 22. In the second of three days of action across the Liga FA. But we'll run all the way through until tomorrow night when Atletico de Madrid closes out against Al Hamer. But for now, the battle to try and keep Barcelona within their sights ahead of Clasico continues for Real Madrid. Need a miracle now to claim anything higher than second. But they've got an unbeaten run to protect. That winning run came to an end at 13 games against Atleti last time out. But can they cement their place as a strong second in Liga FA. Traditional colours for Las Blancas. And the visitors having made the long trip over 1,100 miles from the Canary Islands. Have a job to do today, but they've done well in the big test so far this season. Those from Grandia de Abona. And both Real Madrid and Barcelona close this season. They actually lost just 2-0 to Barcelona in the opening game. And a 3-2 thriller between these two back in February. However, both of those games were at home. How will they fare away in the Spanish capital? Weir's ball into Olga Carmona. Vanna Andres forward. Toletti. Now Icari will chase. First touch for Alina. Stopped by the Real Madrid captain and Sfeva will follow in on a return to the side. Forward from Paula Hernandez. Claudia Florentino. Stops it going any further with Gift Monday. Some thinking time. Here's Natalia Ramos. Back to Bero Herrera. And a bit of pressure from Naikari on Tais Ferreira. It will be the captain. Patrick Abira's ball that goes long. Here's Gift Monday. Rise a challenge from Florentino. On the first corner. He's going to go to Granadilla Tenerife. We saw just how well Visitors Valencia performed last night against the odds early on against Barcelona. Will it be the same story for the island side? It's going to be a delivery from Natalia Ramos. That's plenty of options. It's Veronica Herrera pushing around in the six-yard box. It won't quite come to her. It was won by Gabira first. Linda away. Well, Madrid didn't panic, and Olga Carmona has won a free kick. Steady start from Real Madrid. Monday fouled. Nigerian looks to be able to shrug it off. She is the recipient. Gets there just ahead of Toletti. French woman gets her foot in. There's some help from Athenea. Olga Carmona. 
Pressure was on from Clau Blanco. Real Madrid building. It's just ahead of Linda Caicedo. She still managed to get that. Olga. Colombian looking to plot a route towards goal. Has to go backwards with first on Osa, then Andres. His favour. First time ball, Olga Carmona once more. Patience from Real Madrid. Claudia Zornosa. It's over the head of Naikari Garcia. And had to be watched carefully back by Pisco. And into the safe hands of Aline, who's only just come back into the starting lineup for Jose Herrera. Vastly experienced Brazilian of 33. Had no luck with injuries during her career, though. Has largely been understudied to Noelia Ramos since her return from her latest injury problems. Olga. Again, Claude Blanco putting the pressure on. Here's Andres. In his favour. Now for Linda. Touch letter down. Looked to have caught a stay at two. It's still the Real Madrid ball. Has found its way and probably to Weir. It's Pascal Beer up. It's still Caroline Weir. It was robbed off her and Grenadier Tenerife haven't got it clear. Awkward touch backwards from Paula Hernandez that almost plunged the side into trouble. First sign of a threat from Real Madrid. Still fighting on two fronts. The Merengues failed to advance to the latter stage of the Champions League this season, but they have reached the last four under Copa de la Reina. It was a hard fought battle a week last Thursday against Villarreal. Needed Linda Caicedo's first goal for the club in extra time to get past the yellow submarine. So no sir calling for that ball. And it's she who will get it. Clever touch. Athenea going forward. Manages to play it inside towards Weir, but that's where the move breaks down. It's favor getting across to stop Yasina Blom. Florentino finds Zonosa. No time for Sveva. Linda still being forced backwards, this time by Natalia Ramos. Granadilla Tenerife happy to press Real Madrid in these opening stages. Do my best as well to keep you abreast of what's going on in the other early kickoff. And I tell you that Madrid Club the Football have already taken the lead against the Athletic. In that separate noon kickoff. It's favour under pressure. Now Blanca looking to try and win this one back. Spavre just about made up for it there, the day. And saw no set. And Monica's goal for. When Labrada outfit in the uh, other game. So, the football cement themselves further in the fifth place. Very much a chance of catching Atleti. One point beyond them. Played one game fewer, or they will have done them in around an hour or so. Atleti can wait with bated breath what happens tomorrow. Below them playing. All six below them still to be in action. Intended recipient as you've seen a block, but it won't reach it. And from Athenaeid. Isn't in the end resulting 
Real Madrid possession. In the West, warmly acknowledged here at the Stadio Alfredo Di Stefano. Thais Ferreira is going to take this goal kick. And already Real Madrid seeking to take advantage of that low-lying offside line. Pisco. You see the Bloms trying to get away. Well read by Misa Rodriguez, who initially looked to have overrun the edge of a penalty area. And quick check of the studs. Showed good positional awareness in the end. Linda. favour now for Andres you see Nablom not giving up on that it's flicked through in the end towards Nay Carry by Weir Nay Carry will give chase Thais Ferreira servicing a goalkeeper then servicing Caroline Weir so no set forced to go backwards Real Madrid won't mind that. It's favour. And now Linda. Well, she did well to get behind Bero Herrera. And there was just too much pace on the ball in the end. Nothing to separate then. And tight opening. Ten and a half minutes. There have been a few tight affairs of late for Real Madrid. Of course, the Sunday nil-nil with Atletico de Madrid, but and also the Copa del Reina tie against uh, Villarreal. But don't forget as well, one nil against Sporting de Huelva, and three-two against this very opponent back in February. They haven't been waltzing through games. Now there might be a chance to carve an opening. Now Carey wanted to take that quickly. Of course, it can be very easy when you're in the standings below a team like Barcelona to, to lose track of just how good Real Madrid have been at times this season. They still have scored 63 goals in 21 games by many professional clubs at the top level, averaging three per match. <laughs> by Zornosa. Behind by Pisco. <laughs> First corner for Real Madrid. Way by Sveber this time. Plenty of options forward though. Ivana Andres was in there. It was a juggle, but eventually a catch from Malin. Allowed to bounce. Or no, sir. Putting to it the second time of asking. Not by Hernandez. This goes ball. Walk fine, Gif Monday. seen a very fluid Real Madrid back line. When the teams came out, we were told that Sofia Sveva, by trade, a fullback or a wingback, would be playing at centre half. Claudia Florentino on the right of defence and Olga Carmona on the left. And as you can see now, Claudia Florentino is over on this left hand side. Olga is further up the field. So much versatility in Roberto Torrio's ranks. It's too strong a ball for Olga Carmona. Real Madrid, don't give you a moment's thinking time. Linda Caicedo quickly initiating the press. Sveva, shared too much of that to Clau Blanco and again manages to recover herself. Second time the Danes have almost been caught in possession. It's Linda. Letty forward. 
Cup race between Olga and Herrera, one that Olga will win. To her credit, the Venezuelan defender gets back and makes the block, corner. Discussion about who will take this. Teletti's going to leave it for Weir, an established corner artist. <laughs> it will be the short offering. For that not to fall to Olga Carmona, it still has to be cleared, and it is. And Paula Hernandez, followed up by Florentino. And you've seen them go in. Not on this occasion. Waiting for it. First goal in Real Madrid for Colors, Claudio Florentino. So Real Madrid started the 2020 2021 season. She's spent time at our hometown club, Valencia. Alba City as well. Free kick Granadier, Tenerife. Pisco to stand over it. High line from Real Madrid. It's well hit ball right into the danger zone. Headed on by Gift Monday. There's a battle on for it. A battle that's favourable win. The flag is up on the near side. You've seen a blonde, doesn't agree. Frustrations have to be allayed by referee Elena Pelaez. A test though for Real Madrid. A couple of warning shots fired from their visitors. Gift <laughs> Mundo. Legs of Claudia Florentino. There's a tangle in there. Referee had a good look at it and a good view of it. And dress forward. Letty always stretching to reach that. Long controls. Looking doing from Ivana Andres. A scrappy passage of play, one that has ended up with a Tenerife throne. Their option was Clau Blanco. Clau Blanco wrestling with Olga. Helped out in the end by Toletti first, then Linda. Risky ball from the French woman across her own defence, but it has found the target. It's all no set. Valentino on the stretch to keep that alive, and it's possession back to Granadier Tenerife again. It's Thais Pereira. Pereira into Gabira. Away by Andres. Bala Hernandez turning. Pisco. Towards Yasina Blom. Sveva will call for the flag. It doesn't come. Monday court. Very even in the opening stages. Hard to say which side, if any, has had the upper hand. Now the goalkeeper has had to make a save. This time it is a deeper defensive line from Real Madrid. Two the options in there. Gabira landing up on the edge of the box. You've seen a blomp on the height. There's the goalkeeper. Spilt it the first time, Misa. Nobody in purple was near it or near enough to make a credible challenge. 
One fumble apiece then. The two stoppers. Made to pay. And Parry can let that run and Weir looked like she might make a challenge for it. Thanks back to the goalkeeper. Maybe with the stop. It's Letty. With a quick feat to beat Natalia Ramos the first time, but popped out by Thais. in Fuen Labrada, Athletic Club have equalised the pick it. Let's Madrid Club in football, that's 1-1. One, one. Yeah, clearance from Thais. And chance for Real Madrid to find a way through. Weir, that's exactly what she's done. There is Natalia Ramos and Claude Blanco, Olga. Dress. Martina up against Monday. Monday's won that back. And Nigerian to find space, but to pass ahead of Yasina Blanc. There's Olga. Followed again by Cloud Blanco. This time managing to pass through. Steyer will shout for it. He's any chance on this earth that the ball had crossed the white line. Here's Toletti. His favour. To Andres. I know that in the namesake, Claudia Florentino, but such is the press from Granadier Tenerife that Real Madrid are forced to go back to Misa again. Familiar pattern in these opening salvos. Very little to report in the first 21 minutes. And Sornosa, followed by Paula Hernandez, eventually manages to shake her off. Familiar helping to build. And here's Olga. Up towards all the heads, now he carries in there. Be headed away by Gabira. Picked up by Athenea. There's no one on the end of the pass. Not in white anyway. Florentino. Held off by Gift Munda. Too many options for Munda. He's managed to find Gabira. The captain's ball is a good one in that it fends off the immediate danger. But there's a sense that Real Madrid are just starting to thaw here. Looking for a way through to Weir. Max staying down. Might have been a ball on to Athenea, but not through Pisco, that's for sure. There's Weir. Trying to turn Hernandez. Turning in vain in the end. And Tino, Weir again. Bringing in his favour. Took an injury on international duty with France, Sandy Toletti. And with Cathay and Sosa. And expected to be a longer absence. Hasn't quite had the that she might have hoped for, the top scorer in Granadilla Tenerife colours. Allowing the ball plenty, but yet to have a sight of goal. You no know, also around Granadilla Tenerife, only once in the last seven seasons have they not finished in the top six. To be some way off that this season, that's given away. Here's Gift Monday. Blom is in the centre. Cloud Blanco also arriving. Still Gift Monday. Now Blanco, rocking from Sfavor, and she had to make it. Result is corner to Grenadier Tenerife. Proper danger for Real Madrid. Time was on the side of the away team. 
in a corner only to show for their efforts. They might feel slightly short-changed. Training ground set up then. Just Herrera left full. And Granadier make this purple patch translate into a goal. This was not for now. Trao Blanco back in, dangerous ball. Misa hasn't got there, it's Blom. It's going to be a whistle. Misa was down and unable to defend her goal. It's hurt too. A relief to see that she's picked herself back up to her feet. There's no Meline Gerard on the bench today. It's uh, Sofia Fuente, the 18-year-old, who, if called upon, will be making the Real Madrid debut. Oh, God. To Linda. Over again. Dangerous ball. Over the head of Nai Carey. And he followed up by Toletti, but give Monday in hot pursuit. And again, the Nigerian is first on top of it. An equally strong challenge from Toletti. Doffered out by head coach Jose Herrera. Be pleased with the side's efforts so far. Not the best chance of the game. Al Blanco's effort certainly looked on target before it was met by a block from Schwaber. Here's Linda. Olga. Pass from Zornosa. Towards Athenae and El Castillo, and it's a brilliant touch to control. The situation well read in the end by Pisco. What now for Real Madrid? We're in a fight here at Alfredo Di Stefano. Athenae are on the corner. Here yeah, is a short option. Let's go along towards Andres away by Gabira. Here's Linda. That shirt's fanning out. Andres with space ahead of her. Space that's quickly shut down by Tice. Marrying and hustling from Blom. It's favour. Into Olga. And he carries in the centre. Closely marked again by Gabira. Dress following up. Made by Hernandez. Here's Monday. Just going with Athenea. This is really a tricky call. That's the way of the visitors, and there were no complaints. Let's go on the throw then. So we want a piece in the, in the midday local time kickoff. A square between Madrid Club de Football and Athletic Club. In his favour. Tins ball fall. Stopped by Pedro Herrera. Here into Olga. Fletty, Linda. Now Weir. Whistled off the ball. Javi Ramos then got it straight back. Here's Crowd Blanco. It's possessed by Olga. Sveva finds Andres. Florentino to Athenea. Keep from her. No sure, no sir. Again, Natalia Ramos though, right over the shoulder. Oh, this pass will evade Angel Carmona. Enforced error from Real Madrid. And it stands there. Nine points behind their biggest rivals. Don't forget the Classico coming up a week today. All that on the service. Here's Linda. 
And to Letty, keep a weir in the centre, won't find it. Pereira was there. Saw no shot. Go to Florentino. Third bit of plomb by Pisco. Recycled by Andres. That's wayward in the end. Real Madrid trying to turn the screw. At the moment, that 5 2 3 from Granadilla Tenerife is soaking up everything that's been thrown at them. Met by Toletti, and back by Tace. That should be over Carmona's ball. It's Faber. Andres. Between Naikari and Linda. Let's come to Toletti. Now Olga. For Linda Caicedo. Linda Caicedo almost got there, upended by Veronica Herrera. Goalkeeper had come as well and then decided she was too late. The Colombian struggling. Let's go for the trainer. So quick off the mark and she's difficult to deal with. I don't know if we're going to get a replay of the uh, incident. She was quickly away. It looked to be a firm but fair tackle from the Venezuelan defender. But there is some concern here. One of the bright young stars of the Merengue's lineup. Just brought in the start of last month from Deportivo Cali. My first league start today. A continuation. This match is in serious jeopardy. There are attacking options on the bench. Namely, Naomi Feller, Esther Gonzalez. No shortage of talent, but this will be worrying nonetheless for Alberto Toril. Key games coming up, the Classico, the semi-finals of the Copa del Reina. He'll be very relieved to see his Tino star back on her feet. Referee's got a choice now. So she's opted for the drop ball. No free kick was called. They paused for the injury rather than an infringement. So Real Madrid, while wow. he's off the field, will be down to 10 players. Peace go forward. And the away side exploit the player advantage. Good ball towards Blom, but nevertheless dealt with by Misa Rodriguez. Weir. His favour into Andres. It remains to be seen whether Linda Caicedo will continue. Not see too much action on the Real Madrid bench. Meanwhile, forward to Toletti. Maikari in the middle. The two it was too close to the goalkeeper who nonetheless still had to keep a close eye on it. And that of course for Linda Caicedo. She's managed to run off her knock. Nakamea stopped by Blanc. Again, I think that might be it for her. 
It's a really sad sight. So much hype up about this young woman with abundant talent brought over to shine in Europe. And it's going to be an unfortunate end here on match day 2022 unless she can pick herself up. Going down for the second time in a couple of minutes. The signs unfortunately don't look good. Fortunately, there is a wealth of attacking talent available to Alberto Toriel and his staff. And I'm likely to take the risk. It means we won't be seeing the talents of the 18 year old attacker in the last off today. So for the moment, again, Real Madrid back down to 10. See whether you know, Caicedo tries to make a second go of it. Looking gingerly. And the side on the defensive again. Fifth Monday. Up against Florentino. Didn't want to Cloud Blanco in the end though. And there's Schwaber. Weir. Does look to be game over then. And then the Caicedo. Schwaber. Andres. Over again. <coughs> and we're slipping, doing the very best to stop Club Blanco there, who will feel that the Real Madrid player impeded it when on the ground. game still. Hey, on the screen you can see that Marcelo has been able at least to walk back unaided to the end of the bench. It's dealt with by Kabira. Valentino's throat, can't find Athenea. Here by Pisco, does it run for Gif Monday? to make this change. There's no carry. We are calling for it. And Olga. Against Cloud Blanco. It's favouring to Toletti. Let's just flick on. We might get there. It's Weir. It's no carry with the air shot. It's still there, Athenea into the goalkeeper's hands. By far, Real Madrid's best chance of the match. Brilliant bit of play in the build-up. And it's put on a plate almost for no carry. Athenea following up, he only put it straight. Ali in goal. All the more surprising that Real Madrid managed their best chance with only 10 players in the field. So for the stricken in the Caicedo, one comes from the international Naomi Feller. Five goals in all competitions this season. Five of the first touch though, and Pisco's had it. Here's Gift Munda. to deal with it, and he fields it to Blom. Peace goes ball. Scott by Florentino. And there is ball. Blom's control. Looking to give Monday. Well, Florentino, the Nigerian, still battling and gets the block in, but it will be a goal kick in the end. And both players have come off rather sore from that.
Florentino with the ball away. And she was caught before she played that on a standing leg by Griff Monday. This is just going to be the goal kick by the looks of it. Wants that taken again. Here's Andres then. All level. One solid chance for both teams. And here goes Athenea. He's come over onto the left hand side to. And after Felez entering, entering to play. Also been a bit of a switch up for Granadier Tenerife at the uh, attacking end too. It's a fluid rotation. We saw if Monday come into a central berth with his senior blow out on the left. That seems to have switched back. But so Herrera trying to cycle his attacking options. And this fella. Now we're. Kari making a beeline for the centre of the box. Toletta's already there. There's no way through for Zorno shot. No, Kari can't hold it up. This is favour. A goal right in the stroke of our time would help Real Madrid's course towards Weir. Just couldn't keep it down. So the ball was good, but she was right underneath it. Put under pressure by Pisco, who's defended well throughout the 41 minutes we've had. Well, Madrid heading for a third straight half of football. And that's a goal at either end. Pisco. It's Blom. Bit of a nick off Florentino. He wants to try and stand up the Belgian, which he has. Blom continuing that battle. Now Gif Monday weighing in on the act. Florentino's gone down to ground. He's holding the ball between her legs, and the referee's got to make a call here. The Granadier Tenerife are incensed, and you can see why. The Real Madrid player clearly holding the ball on the ground between her legs. If Monday protesting to that effect, and you've seen a blob, and so it's difficult to see why the referee is giving that decision to Real Madrid. You've seen a blob Look for her part in the protestations. His throat. A keenly fought first half. Madrid have been patient and cautious on the ball, but no dividends have been paid at the end of that. Right, change though. Toletti. Or is it Athenea? And across the face of goal, it's nicked away by Pisco. Athenea was still there. No way through. Might it fall for Weir. Quick feet. Weir. Oh, this is brilliant. And she's put it over the bar. And a snapshot of what the Scotland International can do at her very best. And she couldn't bring the finish at the end of it. Granadier Tenerife just couldn't get boot on ball. It was a waltz through the defence from Caroline Weir. Did the hard part and then unable to find the target. I know bad times to score in football, but the 44th minute when it's 0-0, it's certainly a good one. And now beating Thais to the header. Pisco wins a second ball, but back to Toletti. We're again. 
And she was grabbed hold of by Natalia Ramos. Referee plays the advantage. Olga. Beats one. Ball cleared only as far as Sornosa. Again, Real Madrid queuing up. That one's in the end been left by Patrick Abira. And it will be a goal kick to the away side. Momentum has swung this way and that in the first half. It'd be unfair to say that either side has, has been on top. Here's Thais. One team is on top in the other midday kickoff. Madrid Club de Football have restored their lead 2 1 against Athletic Club. It's Fede trying to burn forward. Should be stopped by Gabira. It's a loose ball from Monday, though. It's favour. Interesting to see if there is any added time at the end of this goalless half. Three minutes, we have had injuries and substitutions. And at the moment, it's Granadier Tenerife trying to hold out. Toletti forward. Through the legs of Nay Carri as she tried to bring in weird. It would have been brilliant had it come off. But it's still Las Blancas ball. Stopped in the middle of the park and now Natalia Ramos. And now there are bodies forward for Granadier Tenerife. And it's Paula Hernandez. And she's got Clau Blanco in support. She's got behind Spavor. Tries to chip to the back post. It's lost by Misa. Scramble clear. Paula Hernandez. If Monday caught flat-footed. Fele helping out with the defensive duties. And a scary moment comes to an end for Real Madrid. Might there be another to follow it? Monday, trying to beat Zornosa. She goes down to ground, she'll complain for the free kick. It's a free kick she doesn't get. Now Toletti, end to end, first minute of three added. She's taking a claim to a starting spot. Naomi Fella. She hasn't always started, she's been a key feature in the team. How about this from Clau Blanco, though, went for a, the chip to the back post. There wasn't any power in the shot, but it squirmed through the grasp of Misa. And luckily for Real Madrid, Ibana Andres was there to clean up. Now then, Athenea. Trying to work it forward towards Nay Curry. And that's going to be a free kick on the edge of the penalty area. And vociferous complaints from Patrick Gabira, who's been penalised for handball. Well, it clearly was played onto her arm. No doubt that it wasn't intentional, but the arm out of her body, you are going to see those given against you. And there's a critical moment right at the end of this first half. Real Madrid been in a tussle for 47 and a half minutes. Can they do themselves a massive favour? Bring themselves into the dressing room with the advantage. No side has scored more goals from outside the box in Liga AFB this season. Letty and Weir over it. It's Weir, and it's into the wall, and it's cleared by Gift Monday. And with that, maybe that's the last chance of the first half. Indeed it is. Goalless, and Estadio Alfredo Di Stefano. But that's not to say we haven't had action. Chances at both ends, both teams coming close. Real Madrid, in some senses, have limped through to half-time. Could have been different, though, if a moment of magic from... Caroline Weir had ended in a goal. She danced her way through the Granadilla Tenerife defence, but when it came to finding the shot, she could only scoop it over the bar. A couple of hairy moments for Misa Rodriguez in the Real Madrid goal. And a juggle two for Alin. Back for the Canarian side. It's been on as even in this first half. All to play for when we come back in 
around 15 minutes time the half-time score is Real Madrid nil Granadilla Tenerife nil Do you rather play in the heat or in the cold? I don't run around a lot, See? so the heat isn't as effective, but lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Like yeah. cold, is cold. Just uncomfortable. Exactly. Like I would go like in my bikini and I would not move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Trop chaud. Non, moi personnellement trop chaud. Moi aussi, je Parce préfère. Parce que trop froid. Non, je préfère avoir trop froid. Tes doigts de pied et tout. Tes doigts de pied et tout. Tu peux trop pas jouer. Ah, mais mmh. trop chaud, c'est-à-dire que tu transpires tout le temps et tout. Ouais, c'est vrai. Moi, perso, j'assure trop chaud. Moi. If you're so, so hot, like, how are you going to bring your temperature down a lot? I don't know, go inside. Air conditioning. Have some ice cream. It's hot inside. Too, too hot. Really? Yeah. Because if you're too the cold, sun. you can always put some clothes on no matter what. Yeah, but I just need the sun. I mean, you're talking to us. Yeah. So she needs the sun. This is Marta Torrejon. And this is Irene Paredes. And this is The Big Question. Puede haber más intolerantes es verdad, estás a la mayonesa, un... eh, que es intolerancia al huevo, al, a los otros productos que tenga la mayonesa. El ketchup es como más, va, tomate. O sea, que esa gente que utiliza la mayonesa utiliza el ketchup y la gente que utiliza el ketchup no utiliza la mayonesa. Yo no tomo. Yo pero... solo a veces cuando voy. Eso no me encanta. Cuando voy a... A comer una hamburguesa. Mal. <risa> si no, salsa rosa, la me clavo si sí, hago. <risa> ¿No? 50-50. Patrick, yo no han dicho, podemos hacer salsa, salsa rosa y además ellas prefieren el quechua, han dicho, todo el mundo prefiere el quechua. Pero ahora es que no. Quechu. Quechu. ¿Cuál es la respuesta correcta? No, no, no. Ah. No sabemos. <risa> <risa> A mí no se me puede hacer un cuestionario y luego no decirme la respuesta ya, correcta. Et bah, avec des hot dogs, ça marche. Mais allez, là. <laughs> hot dogs for hands or burgers for feet? Are they uncooked or they cooked? Ah, ya se me había olvidado que juega a fútbol. Igual no te necesito hot dogs en las manos. I think feet. Yeah, because then you can use your hand and with a yeah. brush you can at least walk. <laughs> Si, lo, si tengo, me gustan más las hamburguesas que los hot dogs. Prefiero tener un, un hot dog. ¿Tú eres portera? Un... Sí, pero así. Sí, así. <risa> no sé. I'd say hot, hot dogs for hands. Yeah. No, no. Hot dog era la de más sesión. Para tirártelos, yeah. los hot dogs son fáciles. Yeah. <risa> What if it was one single hot dog? You could just use it like a baseball bat. <risa> sí. Heureusement, yeah. pues, on n'est pas de gâchette. Et la réponse, c'est quoi Il n'y a pas de réponse On va aller se coucher sans réponse. On va mal dormir. C'est la grave. <rire> la nostra risposta définitive. Accendiamo. Die Fläche, wo Sand ist, ich glaube, da, also glaub, da auf einem Quadratmeter. Mehr als ja. ja. Granelli de Sabia. Parce que sont plus piccolini. Ils sont plus En fait, du sable, il y en a où Bah, que dans les plages. Dans les plages. Au désert. Non, je pense que c'est plus d'herbe. Oui, c'est quelque chose. Oui, c'est Et Sahara. Plus de Küste, plus de Strände, plus de Sand. Genau. Als Grünflächen. Ja. Und Sandkörner sind feiner als Grashalme. Oder? Ja. Ja, Sandkörner. Io credo sabbia. Anch'io credo sabbia. La nostra risposta definitiva. Accendiamo. Y la gente empieza a gritar Canelo, el nombre de Canelo, algo increíble. I remember hearing that there's a new guy from Mexico touted to be a great. The crowd is electrified. This kid loves it. You just don't fight Floyd Mayweather at that age. Why would you do that? Y pues al final de cuentas yo quiero hacer historia. Ahí está, mira el golpe, ese. 
Ese fue un golpe muy importante en la pelea. The two Triple G fights were two absolute wars, two epics. That jab opened up a cut on the eyebrow of Canelo. That second fight was for all the marbles. Sentía como si me pegaran con algo de, 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 de hierro, de metal. It's over! Dicen que para toda acción hay una reacción y esa fue mi reacción. Canelo turning pro at the young age of 15. He was destined for great things. Oh! oh. It's all over. It's over. He knocked him out cold. Oh, no. oh nice shot. Rough boy Canelo, pound for pound, best fighter in the Thank world. You. Thank you. Canelo is the beast. You can box at range, you can box up close. I honestly believe nobody can beat Canelo Alvarez. The very best action from around the globe. From free running to Formula One and everything in between. This is the place to see exceptional athletes doing extraordinary things. Whether it's near impossible challenges or life-changing journeys of discovery, these are the innovators pushing the limits of possibility. Incredible moments, unforgettable stories. Welcome to the new home of action sport. Tough times can even make you or break you. It was tough, but it made me. This was the moment that Anthony Joshua became a major star. I was just shouting at him, like, come on, let's fight, where are you running? Joshua's going for the finish. And this is the, uh, the passion of Dylan White. This is an absolute I thought there was going to be riots in the crowd, I really did. In the space of six years, he'd gone from being a raw novice to going in with one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. You're one shot away from, from trouble or disaster at any point. You have to dig deep, and they're the type of fights that people remember for many years to come. Like if you were to hit yourself, your answer. Ow! Weak. <laughs> <laughs> It then it makes me weak because I feel pain. <laughs> and I didn't score and then I feel pain. It just makes you clumsy, so clumsy is like weak. It makes you stronger? No, weaker. If I hit my shin by accident or my ankle and it hurts, yeah. does that make me stronger or weak? It's a weird question. Yeah, I was but if, stronger. Like, But if you're more resistant to pain, it's like you're strong, you know? So should I say, oh, I hit myself. Oh, but I'm so strong. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, just weak. I say weak. Fine answer. Yeah, let's go weak. You should have picked people with two different personalities. It makes you stronger in the long run yeah. the more you hit yourself. <laughs> Neither of them. I She's a vegetarian. <laughs> Schnitzel. Yeah. If I never eat currywurst again, I think I'm okay. Yeah, I, uh, actually, I'm never eating currywurst. <laughs> You've never eaten it? Neither of them. <laughs> I'm She's a vegetarian. I'll take the fries from currywurst because schnitzel is also with potatoes. I think it's very from the north. It's like in Berlin and stuff, you eat a lot of currywurst. Yeah, but here we're in Bayern, so we can go with schnitzel. And I'm yeah. from Austria, that's yeah, schnitzel. That's true. Schnitzel. You go for schnitzel? Yep. Okay. I'll take your. Schnitzel or currywurst, and I'll have both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good! <again. laughs> so it works out well. Is that an agreement? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's an agreement, hey? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Gustav Eden from Norway, part of the Norwegian train, as the man who has not lost PTO race. The 27 year old from Norway, Gustav Eden, will claim victory here. I'm different because I'm smarter than the rest. But you gotta have faith in something. something. And don't hold on to love. love. And hold it tight for life. life. Don't try to hide the things that keep you up at night. 
Watching you fall asleep And then wake up asking why Nothing to separate these two then at the halfway stage. Bitterly contested and well fought first half. Sadly, that saw the withdrawal of the young Real Madrid upstart in the Caicedo. But we've got Naomi Felle on in her place. And you've seen a blonde top scorer of well, the opponents looking to do her bit to upset the apple cart. Real Madrid's winning run stopped at the weekend. 13 matches in a row in Liga FA for the 0-0 draw with Atletico de Madrid. We're at 0-0 once again, halfway into match day 22. Which path will this second half tick? It's Toletti. We only find Hernandez. The first touch of the half for Herrera. No changes for either side at half time. It was a very quick turnaround. Referee seemed to emerge rather quickly from the bowels of Estadio. Alfredo Di Stefano. Offside's keen to get on with this. Here's Toletti. To Florentino and then Andres. All fans want to get their side going in the second period. Might just take a bit of a boost. Blom shutting off the angle for Misa. Misa, who didn't have too much to do, but juggled the late effort from Claro Blanco at a near post. One that would expect the Spain international to hold rather routinely, and it was cleared away in the end by Ivana Andres, but still a very real threat posed by Granadilla Tenerife. They have been a thorn in the side almost of the top teams this season. Haven't quite been able to get over the line and get those results. 3-2 against Real Madrid last month. 2-0 on opening day against Barcelona. And if you've been following them, you'll know the kind of scorelines that have been drummed up since. It's their home form that's done them better. They're making a good account of themselves away. It's a bit of a painful start to the second half for Veronica Herrera. Here's Yasina Blom. Oh, Carmona made it very clear to everyone there that she hadn't touched that ball. Big first half for Jose Herrera on his side. Here's Andres. Fenea happy to take the throw rather than Launch yourself into a battle with Pisco. Forward from Zornosa into Weir. That play brings in Athenea. Feller there too. Here's Naomi Feller. Wrong side of the post. But a warning shot from Real Madrid at the start of the second period. Posing a threat that was at times lacking in the first half. Defence this time slow on the uptake. France International wide of the mark. Uh, Countrywoman Toletti with a chance to start a quick counter, but the control evades her. Here's Andres. Olga. So no sir, finding Florentino. Behind Athenea del Castillo. And cleared away by Gabira. So a measure into wit. 1 2 with Toletti. So no sure again. That one will evade Weir, beaten to it by Paula Hernandez. Now about the counter. And this is where 
Tenerife have been dangerous. Clau Blanco. Fouled by Olga Carmona. There's been a handful in recent weeks. De Brace in a 5 2 win over Madrid Club de Football last time out, Clau Blanco, but there's so much away from goal as well. Been a proper outlet on the right hand side of the Granadilla Tenerife midfield. Deep line from Real Madrid. First proper slice of defending this side of half time. It's a decent whip in. And it was towards Herrera. If it runs, it's going to be a Granadilla Tenerife throw in. And that's a score line, nil nil, that we haven't seen very many times here at. Estadio Alfredo Di Stefano, not in the second half. Suspicions of a foul throw there. Delivered by Pisco. Referees let that one slide. We're controlling, beaten to it, Natalia Ramos, and couldn't make it count with the finish. She's been hurt going to ground in the aftermath too. May have just crept over the line from Yasina Blom. It was impossible to tell from that angle. Either way, we're with a misstep to give that ball away, and I think it's her collision just into the side of the head of, of Ramos. No question that the Scotland international wasn't aware of her opponent's proximity to her on the ground. No less painful, I'm sure, for the Tenerife player. Here's Pisco. Monday from Blom. And still gave Monday that did go out. So Florentino then with the throw. Still nothing separating these two teams. Hernandez. Cross back towards her own goal. Albeit only briefly. Madrid Club de Football leading 3 1 now. And the other midday kickoff as Blom goes forward against Florentino. It's still Yasina Blom. This could be dangerous against Andres. And she's got herself a corner. Now then. Blom refused to give up on that. Real Madrid wanted the free kick. Chance to make their hosts pay. Maybe a job to do for Misa. Tense moments at Alfredo Di Stefano. Here comes the corner, headed goalwards and wide. There have been opportunities. It was a sell-up with a header at the near post. Couldn't make it count. And Alberto Toril is seeing fit to bring on the likes of Maite Orof. So Letty forward, looking for Athenea. Hernandez. Thais's ball. There's a stay up. Blom with a turn on Spavor. Referee well placed to see that. And this time, the protestations from Blom are listened to. Free kick Granadier Tenerife. Really well to roll Sophia Sveber. Turning to the starting 11. It's been 
under pressure today. Constantly up against the threat of Crow Blanco on Madrid's left side. Stay with the ball in Zona, so went for it. It's going to go behind for a goal kick. I think it's Thais Ferreira who got that touch and has taken a painful hit on the way through. Just got in between Zornosa and Andres. And again, we need the trainer called on. It's been a physical, hard-fought contest. And a contest that's calling for the input. And Esther Gonzalez, says Alberto Toril. Going to be joined by Mighty Roth. Two of the most reliable faces in the Merengue's lineup this season. Esther with 22 goals in all competitions. He's going to replace Ney Cari Garcia. And for Mighty Eroth. Chance now to, on the 34th match of the season, more than anyone else in the whole of the Blancas uh, squad. He has the chance to. Make an impact in place of Claudia Zornosa. Edging towards the hour mark and still without a goal. And here's Toletti. Fella. Can't find where. Will only find Gabir up. And we've got Gift Monday down on the near side, as is Sandy Toletti. Uh, the smart thing done that. Uh, Pisco just to put the ball out of play and make sure both players are okay. ball over the head of Athenea. She'll get it the second time of asking. Just such for Maite Roth. Now forward for Morgan Carmona. And now it's Esther. She has options in the middle. She's got to get past Thais Pereira though. What off? Chips ball forward, and it's found its way through to Esther, and she can't beat the goalkeeper. A chance for a lightning impact from the bench. Flag was down, and rightly so. Great touch to flick it onto her right foot. She was just put off by the defender. Thais Pereira getting in the way. Oh, she might have given that away. Yasina Blom battling. And Yasina Blom's won it, but she's rather isolated in purple. Here's Natalia Ramos. And for the second time in the second half, she hits one high, wide and handsome. It's a nil-nil, but it's been an entertaining one. Florentino fall. Matiaroth receiving from Toletti. Now Sveva has to try to get away. He stopped. Play is still up. Toletti. Olga Carmona is blocked rather viciously by a stay up. It was a meaty challenge. And on one pitch to the Granadier Tenerife player led with her arm. And there are perhaps surprisingly no further repercussions from the referee, Elena Pelaez. Towards Esther. Olga to her left. Options in the middle. It's still Esther. Ball finds short of reaching Toletti, but it's gifted away to Olga by Natalia Ramos. 
Esther once more. Feller. Olga. Against the stayer. She's got the ball in. It's found Athenea del Castillo. Feller. Athenea. Is there going to be a way through? The shot from distance into the bodies. Feller. A grimace and a thought of what might have been. Slow and steady build-up play from Real Madrid. Athenea del Castillo, try as she might, just couldn't get a sight of goal, nor of Esther. The chance finally fell to Naomi Feller. And she could only send it flying. Starting to see more of the Real Madrid attack. Granadilla Tenerife largely reduced to shooting from distance this side of half time. His favour. Now we're off. Florentino and Andres sharing passes. Monday challenging as ever. Favor or off, Athena del Castillo calling for it. It will be fell out now ahead of Esther. We're in the middle, so to Athena. Esther looking for the ball in. That's a mighty or off. Toletti won't find Esther. And Andres has got a battle on against Gift Monday. Monday has won it. Real Madrid, a ca uh, captain atoning for the slip up. And there wasn't too much that Gift Monday could really do. She was isolated in a sea of white shirts. Real Madrid being frustrated by their visitors from the Canary Islands who are going to make a change. The American Claire Faulkner. Stripped and ready to come on. He's one of two changes. Might see her off. Battle on, and Athenae del Castillo is going to come out on top. It's ahead of Feller, though. Nothing seems to be sticking for Real Madrid. Dress. That's Amisa who's put under pressure by Blom. That's going to fall to Hernandez. She's going to have a go. Amisa had managed to get back between the posts, and that was always missing the target anyway. So then, triple change it will be, as well as Faulkner. We're going to see Maria Jose Perez and Anjan Gessen. Paolo Hernandez, one of those to be changed in the centre of the park. That'll be Fulton's job to shore up the midfield. Going with her, Cal Blanco. And you've seen a Blom, two of the foremost threats for the visitors. So Maria Jose Perez, an attacker by trade, will likely lead the line. Anjan Gessen, also known as Coco Anche, is going to come on as well. Big change up from Jose Herrera. Misa putting the pressure from the off. Maria Jose Perez. Here comes Florentino. Forward towards Naomi Feller. Can she get there first? Well, she did get there first, but she was blocked off well by Veronica Herrera. 
And the corner will have to do. We're to deliver. Can Real Madrid make this pressure pay? Might have to do it from a retake. Referee wants a word with Maria Jose Perez and uh, Esther Gonzalez. It's hard to see what part in that Esther Gonzalez had. With the ball's not in play, you can't award a foul. That's why we've got a retake, not anything more serious. Short ball to Maitero. Sani Toletti, it's been missed by Fele, who went for it. Olga, cleared away by Maria Jose Perez. Granadilla Tenerife refusing to flap on the pressure. Still, nothing separates us here in the Stadio Alfredo Di Stefano. As it stands, Real Madrid nine points behind the lead going into the Clasico. If it does stay the same, they'll be winless in two. Weir and Toletti. It's behind Athenae del Castillo. Feller got there, but Natalia Ramos can pinch it back. Touch from Gift Monday. We're into my tear off. Narrowly avoids Coco Anke. Now Olga. Up against the stayer. Gets the cross in. Goalkeeper's left it. Oh, and away off the line. We're with the effort. Thais Pereira with the clearance. And a bit of help from the woodwork to boot. It's the closest that Real Madrid have come to breaking the deadlock. We are latching on to that tip away from Aline in goal. And only the quickest of reactions could deny it the opener. This one the goalkeeper will come for and hold. It's a quick release up towards Coco Ange. And all the way, the number eights are battling. Maitirov shrugged away from the ball. And Coco Ange didn't bring it with her. Lacking in goals, but not lacking in entertainment, this one. Brilliant clearance. I don't know how much she knew about it. Whether it was a brilliant bit of reactionary play or just being in the right place at the right time, the Brazilian defender has kept the score at 0 0. Toletti. Stopped by Thais. Isco with the pass. Maria Jose Perez trying to cause problems for Imana Andres, who, with her header back, almost caused issues, difficulties for Misa. She certainly kept it in. His favour. The stop from Herrera. Olga Carmona down. She's in pain. She's almost hauled to her feet by Natalia Ramos. Not immediately clear what the infringement was. There is some concern for the condition of Olga Carmona. Let's have a look. Oh, she's just taken one right in the breadbasket. Got the win right out of it. Great stretching from Misa Rodriguez. No question of the ball staying in play. Just a quick reminder for the assistant referee. Well, Olga's okay to continue. Real 
Real Madrid need all hands on deck if they get back to winning ways. They've been frustrated for over an hour now. A Granadier Tenerife. They've had chances off their own, but here's Olga. Hits the, hits the ground running. Deflection could have gone anywhere from Veronica Herrera. Corner it will be. We're starting to see more and more attacking pressure from the Merengues. Corner count starting to stack up. Sandy Toletti been entrusted with the delivery. Here it comes. It's away. Word says Ferreira. Anthony Del Castillo into the body of Pisco. Rocco Anke will chase, but Sveva beating it to it. It's both player and ball. Olga, dangerous cross. Goalwards over the bar. Athenea Del Castillo with the header, and she knows how close she came. And just look at the run that she makes as well. Got a lot of ground to cover. She meets it with a real pace, and that perhaps is to the detriment of her accuracy. A fraction over. Still, we go on at nil-nil. Battle from Pisco all oh, well. And we've got two players down, and this ball's going to stay in play. Coco Ange with the cross, blocked by Olga Carmona, and there's now there's no obligation for either side to put the ball out until the referee stops the play. And from the yells we were having, I was quite worried about. This altercation. Anthony Del Castillo is okay. Not quite sure about Pisco. Referee just motioning to Patrick Abira to say that she allowed the play to continue. One player from either side was down, and it was a fair call in the end. Uh, worrying times when you see players go down with such frequency. Already lost Linda Caicedo. Last week's Madrid derby saw the end of the season and possibly the calendar year for Ludmila of Atleti. The knee injury. Here's Coco Ange. She's still going. Almost found her way through. That's going to tee up for Faulkner. A rare for a forward in the second half for Granadier Tenerife. Blocked by Gabira, from Gabira. It's going to come to nothing in the end. But still a reminder of the threat that the away side can pose. And over in Fuenlabrada, not too far south of here. There's quite a game brewing between Madrid Club de Football and Athletic Club. It's now 3-2 to the home side. Athletic through Clara Pinedo. And we've got another one back. That one from the penalty spot. Still all to play for here. And here's Maria Jose Perez. Sets away Pisco. Gift Monday's in the middle. It's still Pisco. Now then, cuts it back. Volta arriving. And Maria Jose Perez is the one to put it wide. There have been chances since that huge throw of the dice from Jose Herrera, changing up three players. One of those was Maria Jose Perez. Weir. Fell out to chase. Header in from Gabira. Belair short. He scored with the clearance. Still smarting in the collision with uh, Athenae El Castillo. His mighty are off. Real Madrid still with a stranglehold on possession. Haven't been able to find a way through though. No 
Valentino trading with Misa. Maite Oroff. It's a poor ball to Esther. And the forward can't control. Monday towards Coco Anke and dealt with by Sfavor. Still goalless. Coco Anke battling. And she's got around Sfavor. Corner ball. As much as Sfavor will protest, it looked to come off her leg last. Valanke has been a real threat, although well, maybe, maybe Sveva does have grounds to complain. Either way, the call will stand and it will be a corner kick to Granadier Tenerife. Real Madrid have won their last six at home in all competitions. That run very much under threat. Here comes the delivery. It's big. It's too big. That's going to just about run for a goal kick. The only team to beat Real Madrid at home this season is, of course, Barcelona. Might that be something that Tenerife can change? Here's Maria Jose Perez. She goes down. Referee with a clear view, not having any of it. And Maria Jose in disbelief, but a side they've got defending to do. Esther will give chase. It's going to be watched by Pisco. Well, it would be interesting to have a second look. We've already seen a yellow car for descent so far. In this game, I wonder if there might be another one coming. There does seem to be one given out. And it's not clear who it's gone to. Has it gone to Aline? It was shown in her direction. It could have been Athena del Castillo. But the salient detail. Penalty waved away, and now Real Madrid on the attack. Del Castillo's ball in. Into the centre rim wide by Maitierov. Just can't seem to find a route through. Athenea with a brilliant ball to pick up Maitia off. Just puts it wide. Went down in a clumsy challenge. And you get the sense that Maria Jose Perez might have been looking for that. End of the day for Gift Monday. Colette and Zana. An attacker for an attacker coming on. Cameroon International. Gift Monday's wait for a first goal in Liga F8 goes on. Certainly plenty that she was doing down the left flank for Granadier Tenerife, who have got themselves very much in a contest. Here's Weir. Esther looking to peel away. Olga. And the tempo keeps on rising. All the way through. Athena del Castillo. Is she going to beat the goalkeeper? And pounced upon by Aline. Well read by the goalkeeper. To see more Real Madrid changes. Freya Siri Olofsson is going to replace Sandy Toletti. 
Also seeing the end for Athenado Castillo. And here comes Carolina Muller Hansen. Double dose of Scandinavian talent then for the final 10 minutes of normal time. Fella will chase. Olofsson into Sveber. Juggling Natalia Ramos. Still not clear which way this game is going to go, if either way. Hereth left to chase that one. And the noise levels are deafening. And the Stadio Alfredo Di Stefano. Here's Weir. Up towards Esther. Esther beaten to it. Patrick Gabira, and she's trying to set away Coco Ange. Eric wasn't going to give up on that ball. Faulkner. And Pisco. Pereira to chase, Andres watched it all the way. Juggling from Natalia Ramos, Olofsson into Sveber. Just behind whip. Thais will clear. Here's Nzana. Crunching challenge on Claudia Florentino. Just a throw in. And she felt that. I felt that. Olofsson. Olga. Mighty Oro. Esther in the middle. So to Muller Hansen. Andres. Couldn't find Fele. Now Pisco's got it. Still a lot to do from here for Granadier Tenerife. Now Nzana. Stopped by Olofsson. Real Madrid trying to come through the gears. Will this be the time? Weir has Esther out to her right. Muller Hansen in the centre too. Esther Gonzalez with the cross. Fielded away again by Granadier Tenerife. Here's Coco Ange. Defence to attack once more. Perez. It's still Perez. And now Nzana. Real Madrid looking stretch. Colet Nzana searching ball. Where's he gone? It's gone over the line. And Grenadier Tenerife take the lead. Maria Jose Perez will claim it. It won't matter who's claimed it. The fact of the matter is, Granadier Tenerife are six and a half minutes away from being the only side other than Barcelona to get a win away at Real Madrid. The substitute in Zana with a cutting ball. It hits favour, Andres couldn't get there. And if it wasn't over the line the first time, Maria Jose Perez made absolutely sure the second. Pure delight. How does he keep cool now?
Well, that has thrown the cat amongst the pigeons. Forward towards Müller Hansen. It won't reach up. Five and a half minutes remaining of normal time, and we're battling away. Given a shove by Pisco. And a yellow card. To add to the defensive difficulties that are sure to come the way of Granadier Tenerife. He's come close so far today, Rio. Now she has the goal in her sights once again. Twenty goals this season for Caroline Weir. This one will be one of the most important. An unbeaten run under threat. She's joined by Sfaber, who hits well, but saved and comfortably so by Aline. The Dane went for it, hammering tongs. A cheap free kick given away by Granadier Tenerife. Not used to great effect by Real Madrid. Here comes Coco Anke. And well, what would a second goal do? Schwaber gets the touch. There are calls for calm. We're at the twilight of a brilliant Liga FA battle. The first was a surprise. The second would be a veritable shock. Front post, it's just wide. Gabira with the header. They've been sturdy in defence. Granadier Tenerife. But attacks in this second period have been few and far between. They have made it count. Feller. Esther. Pushed off the ball by Natalia Ramos. Now Maitia Roth's turn. So many bodies forward. Esther, Feller trying to get out of the way. Mighty Oroth, holds it up well. Dangerous cross, but met by Coco Ange. Defensive effort going to have to go on. Florentino forward. She'll try in vain to keep that ball alive. And every time that ball crosses the whitewash now, Granadilla Tenerife can eke out those seconds to bring them closer to an historic victory. Zana running out of pitch. Olofsson. Andres. Sfeva. Everybody forward for Real Madrid. Up towards Feller. Pisco going to go down. Referee allowing play to continue. Weir. It's now Feller. It's Esther. It's straight at the goalkeeper. Normally so clinical in front of goal. Esther's killer edge has evaporated since her inclusion in the second half. A really saw one for Pisco in the battle with Feller. Well, she will be jeered and harried and hustled by the home fans. The Home side, but there is no obligation to rush. And the yellow card dished down on the bench. I think for Yasina Blom. It can't be for Yasina Blom. She's already been yellow carded, so she would still be on the bench. By the way, tensions are running high. It was for Athena Del Castillo who since the path of the field, by the way, that stray yellow card that we couldn't pin down earlier.
final minute of normal time. on this board is going to have a huge hand in deciding Real Madrid's fate. Andrea Marrero, the defender, is prepped and ready. No task is simple. See this one out. Five minutes. Coco Anke. It's at the right end of the field at the moment for Granadilla Tenerife. Forward towards Nzana. Faulkner will battle. Feller will win it. Does she have the legs? Still Naomi Feller, you bet she has the legs. And now Esther Gonzalez. And Muller Hansen's in the middle, joined by Weir. Esther, it's critical, it's wide. Corner. Would you believe this? And she was onside, Esther Gonzalez. Corner is the call. Curved ball in, headed away by Estea. Ticking ever close up. That's gone the home side's way. All off son. In comes the block. Signs of panic in the Blancas ranks. Sveva forward. Esther trying to help it on. And Zana controlling. Peace go away. And Zana's going to give chase. Dress has to make sure that's a confident ball, and it was. Oh, Kawanke down. The arm, the stray arm from Freya Siriulov's son. So now we are going to see Andrea Marreiro come on to shore at the defence. She's got all of two and a half minutes to make an impact. These might be the two most important minutes of her season so far. And it's Pisco who's been battled and bloodied in the wars today. And also on a yellow card. He's going off. It's an astute call. And all bodies will be on the line. This ball is at the right end of the field for Granadier Tenerife. Lumped forward towards Maria Jose Perez. That was only going to be Mises' ball. 90 seconds of added time remaining. As a minimum. That's going to be a foul on my tear off. Referees wave the advantage forward. Andres into Esther. It's behind Weir. The stakes are high and the mistakes are creeping in. Long ball sent forward. Cleared by Moreira. That's exactly what she was brought on to do. Coco Anke trying to hit the line. That might be her mistake. Just needed to hold that ball. And we're into the final of five added minutes. It's favour. And we have had a substitution in added time. That, of course, might mean that the referee's discretion we're going on beyond 95. Real Madrid have to believe. Here's Weir. Mighty are off. 
This has to go forward. Olafsson, Weir wants it. It's still Caroline Weir. Olafsson again. Crowd urging Real Madrid on to find an equaliser. Olga Carmona down under the challenge of Coco Ange. And Coco Ange has been a revelation off the bench. And forward, Maria Jose Perez. Advantage played. She's going to go for goal. And she wasn't too far away. It might have suited her just to hold it. Is there time remaining? Or have they done enough? Goal kick taken quickly. We're at the referee's discretion now. Last chance saloon. The block comes in. It might be the most important yet. And still we play on. Herrera. Perez. Sveva forward. Real Madrid desperate. Esther battling. So to Muller handsome, but they can't reach it. And again, it's at the wrong end of the field. Still we continue and dress forward. This really is it. The bounce evades Esther. And dress. Sveva. How much longer? The Canarians will ask. Forward it goes. There it is. 14 games without defeat in the league for Real Madrid. That run has been ended. Just a single goal to do it. Misa beaten. Esther Blunt. But it's victory for Patrick Gabira and her travelling side. They've threatened all season Granadilla Tenerife to upset the big guns. They've come to Estadio Alfredo Di Stefano and that's exactly what they've done. All out effort from the bench from Coco Ange. She had a hand in the goal. Colette and Zana too, the substitutes thrown on to great effect at the end. Thais Ferreira with a goal saving clearance from Caroline Weir to keep the score at 0 0. The celebrations will long go on. It's a long trip home. It won't feel it for Grenadier Tenerife. They have registered an historic win at the expense of Real Madrid. The gap to Barcelona is a chasm at the top of Liga FA. Ten point gap with the Clasico around the corner. It has been sealed. At the end of a fabulous purple patch for the travelling team. And discussions about this one. Well, they will continue all through match day 22. This seems to be a slight hint of a sour end. I believe it's Coco Anke who is down. I haven't had a clear view of her. The overriding headline will be the result, and so it's a shame to see the finish marred in such a way. Especially after Coco Anke's brilliant job from the substitutes bench as she was brought on. Well, these are not the scenes we wanted to finish on here at Estadio Alfredo Di Stefano. There are celebrations ongoing. But to comment on the condition of the Granadier Tenerife player would only be to speculate. It's not the end that anybody wanted. Coco Anke brought off on a stretcher after a fabulous performance. She will rightfully be applauded. Her side have done the business today. They knew they should be well clear of relegation. But this is a result that nobody expected. will be a final debrief from Jose Herrera 
This side have come out on top. The only side other than Barcelona to beat Real Madrid away in the capital this season. So the final score with a goal from Maria Jose Perez. Real Madrid nil, Granadilla Tenerife won.